Hi, my trial name is Homemade and in 2019 I completed a continuous through hike of the PCT. One of the biggest highlights was the Sierras. In 2019 it was a high snow year and that was made even um, harder with all of the snowstorms that happened throughout May and this led to some quite challenging conditions. Because of the permitting system, I ended up with a start time a bit earlier than I had originally wanted, and this meant that I got to the Sierras in mid-May, but I decided to continue through, and I completed a solo uh, traverse of the Sierras. Um, I found the Sierras extremely uh, challenging, um, physically, mentally, but it was also amazing and I found it uh, very rewarding. The, uh, the challenges were definitely uh, worth the rewards you got at the other end. Through my experience and luck, um, I made it through without any dramas. Um, and this video is intended to give all of you who are going to be doing the, the PCT in the future um, some information to help you make decisions on how you tackle the Sierras. This is the first of a series of videos I will do covering different aspects of getting through the Sierras. This video is an introduction to the Sierras, a description of the new PCT permanent rules from 2020, and a summary of how I tackled the PCT this year, um, including my resupply strategy and my timings. In the following videos, I'll go into more detail. Part two of the series will be covering resupply strategies. Part three, strategies for getting over the passes and showing you the passes how to deal with the cold in the Sierras and the other conditions and then part five will be uh, covering snow skills that you need in the Sierras. If you have any questions or suggestions on what else you would like covered or any more clarification on, on what I'm saying then please just put a comment down below. The section of the PCT that I'm talking about is the Southern Sierras as shown in the yellow box on this map um, and it's covering from Kennedy Meadows at mile 702 up to Sonora Pass at mile 1016. Once you leave Kennedy Meadows there are seven different options for resupply. The main towns along Route 395, which is to the east of the PCT, is Lone Pine, Independence and Bishop. And then just off Route 395, off on Route 203, is the tourist town of Mammoth Lakes. Um, closer to the trail, you have the Mule Trail Ranch at mile 857. VVR, which is off mile 878, and Tuolumne Meadows, which is off mile 942. In my next video, which will concentrate on resupply options, I'll go through each of these locations in detail, uh, telling you what's in the towns, um, recommendations, and how to get to the locations. Just quickly though, the access points, the access to Lone Pine, first of all there's three passes all quite close together, um, Milky Pass, Trail Pass and Cottonwood Pass which all lead down to Horseshoe Meadows. Trail Pass and Milky Pass are 1.9 miles to Horseshoe Meadows and Cottonwood Pass is 3.8. And then from Horseshoe Meadows to Lone Pine is 22 miles. The other way to get to Lone Pine is via Crabtree Meadows across to the Whitney Portal which is 16.6 miles and then 12 miles to Lone Pine. Be aware that your PCT permit is only valid uh, to the turn off to Mount Whitney. In order to get all the way through to the Whitney Portal you'll need to get a separate permit. The next exit point 
leads to independence, and this is over Cursage Pass to Onion Valley Car Park. This is 7.6 miles, and then you try and hitch a ride to Independence, which is 13 miles away. There is a route to get to Bishop from mile 831, and this is via the Bishop Pass Trail. This takes you over Bishop Pass to South Lake Picnic area, which is 11.8 miles. From there, it is 22.1 miles via two different roads. Next is Mule Trail Ranch. That is pretty easy. That is just one and a bit miles off the trail. VVR is 1.5 miles to get to the lake and then a ferry across the lake. Or you can walk five miles around the lake. To get to Mammoth Lakes, most people go to Reds Meadow and take the shuttle from there to the lake. Reds Meadow is 0.3 of a mile off trail. And then the shuttle is around 10 miles to Mammoth Lakes. However, that may be closed due to the snow and you may need to take the Horseshoe Lake Trail. And this is 3.5 miles from the PCT to Horseshoe Lake. And then it is 5 miles from the lake to Mammoth Lakes. However, the road to Horseshoe Lake may be closed due to snow and you may have to walk an extra 2 miles to get to where the road is cleared. And the last option is to Tuolumne, and this is just 0.3 miles down the road from the trail. This is a summary of the passes. The series have got 15 passes of those. One is over 13,000 feet, which is the famous Forester Pass, highest point on the PCT. There are two that are over 12,000 feet, being Pinchot and Mathis. Four are over 11,000 feet, Glen Pass, Muir Pass, Donahue Pass and Gottenwood Pass. Six are over 10,000 feet, being Mulkey, Trail, Selden, Silver, Island and Benson Passes. And two are over 9,000 feet, being Seavey and Dorothy. One of the future videos, I'm going to do a lot more detail on these passes, showing you what they look like in full snow and some of the possible route suggestions to get over them. I'll also talk about how easy or difficult they are. Here is everything put together. This is all the information about the Sierras. In 2020, the Rules around permits for the PCT are changing in a few ways, but I'm only going to talk about the rules that are affecting the Sierras. Firstly, I'm going to talk about why the change. Basically, it's been driven to protect the environment from the pressures of overuse. The numbers of people on the PCT continue to increase each year. The permit system was introduced to spread people out from the start, but invariably there ends up a surge of people going through the Sierras, especially in high snow years. People who are not confident in the snow often end up flip-flopping, which means skipping the Sierras with the intention to come back when the snow melts. This means instead of everyone being spread out, there's a surge of PCT hikers in mid to late summer. This is the same time that the John Muir Trail is the most popular and also there's a whole lot of other hikers doing shorter hikes enjoying the snow-free Sierras. The large number of people have an impact on the environment, no matter how careful they are. To try and mitigate this, the PCTA and the land management agencies, such as US Forestry Service and the National Park Service, have developed the new permit system. The permit changes that have been implemented for the 2020 season are the first one you must pass through the Sierras, which is from Kennedy Meadows South to Sonora Pass in 35 days. So it doesn't matter how long you're off trail for resupply, if you're injured, if there's storms in the mountains, you have 35 days to get through that section. Um, and I think this time limit is probably going to be the hardest one if things go wrong. Um, there is some leeway. I completed this section in 31 days and that was sitting out uh, a bit of time for storms. Um, the second rule 
is that travel in the Southern Sierra must be continuous with no skips or changes in direction. Once again, if you're trying to avoid weather or, or trying to get through quicker and skipping a central section or a, a section where you're worried about the rivers, um, you cannot do that and keep your same PCT permit. If you are going to be more than 35 days or if you do uh, skip or need to change direction um, you and you want to go back to the series you need to obtain new permits not the PCTA permit but the permit from the local land management agencies uh, for those areas whether it's a US Forest Service US National Park or or whatever else there is um, so you'll have to do your research and find out how to get the permits and which permits you need. Be aware the permits are very competitive in some areas of the Sierras, so this will be an issue. If you do skip, change direction or take more than 35 days, the PCT permit is not affected for the rest of the PCT. This is only for the Southern Sierra section from Kennedy Meadows South to Sonora Pass. More information about these uh, new permit rules for the Sierras and more information about how to get the permits is available on the PCTA website. My main aim when planning going through this year is, is I wanted to take the shortest off-trail options to get to resupply towns. I was aware that it was unlikely that Mule Trail Ranch or VVR would be open and I had to plan accordingly to, for this. I was unaware that Red Meadows to Mammoth Lakes would be closed and it was only when I was checking out the maps the night before arriving that I realised that might be an issue. For my first resupply, I had discounted taking the various options to loan pine as I felt this was too short and I would waste a lot of time trying to get off trail and then back on again. I knew I was capable of carrying eight days food so I was happy to stretch the first leg and aim to resupply at Independence. There was not much information coming out of the Sierras on the snow conditions, so I took two days more food than I thought I'd need. I was glad I did, as it allowed me to wait out the storm on the 15th and 16th of May, when others had had to walk all the way the, from Forester Pass back to Cottonwood Pass because they didn't have enough food to wait out the storm. Unfortunately, Independence didn't have anything there, despite my note saying it was an okay town. So I had to head to Bishop and uh, hitchhiked there, getting a ride quite easily. This is a great decision, as Bishop was the perfect resupply town. Everything was an easy walking distance, and there was a lot of variety in accommodation, food, outfitters, and supermarkets. I had intended to have a double zero, which means two days off. But after only a few hours after I'd cleared Kursage Pass, another storm hit the Sierras and I was very grateful I had got out before it hit. I kept an eye on the forecast and it wasn't looking good. I relocated to Independence as it looked like there might be a clear weather window coming, but by the time I got there it was looking pretty bad. So after one night with a trail angel, I headed to Lone Pine to wait out the storm for another two nights before heading back on trail. The next resupply location was Mammoth Lakes. This was 114 miles. I knew this would be a, a mammoth leg, pun intended, uh, with 11 days of food needed, but there wasn't much choice. Mule Trail Ranch and VVR were both still closed, and I'd heard negative comments about the Bishop Pass Trail. Also, this trail was 11.8 miles to get to a picnic area and then another 21 miles to get to Bishop and a lot of this is likely to be still closed with the snow. I had thought I would get to Mammoth Lakes via Red Meadows but as that was closed I took the earlier turn off and hiked to a car park a couple of miles down from Horseshoe Lake. I had to hike from Horseshoe Lake because the road was closed with very deep snow. Mammoth Lakes was a good location for resupply but it was a lot more spread out than Bishop. It did have good options for accommodation, food, supermarkets and outfitters.
I took two zeros there and then was back on trail, back the same way, though the walk was a little easier because one mile of the road to Horseshoe Lake had been cleared. There was only one resupply option between Mammoth Lakes and Sonora Pass. This was uh, Tuolumne, but unfortunately the road from Tuolumne Meadows was still closed and as a result the store was not open. This meant a seven-day food carry to get to Sonora Pass. Now breaking down each of the sections. The first section was 67 and a half miles on the PCT and then another 7.6 miles to get to the Onion Valley car park. It took me six and a half days and I was carrying eight days of food. My pack weight more than doubled what I had been carrying with the food, beer can, crampons and ice axe. My base weight was normally 15 pounds but it was 40 pounds as I left Kennedy Meadows. The first day was snow free and the following days were mixed with fewer and fewer snow free areas. The snow was in good condition which was surprising given the recent snow. It was nice and firm and easy to walk on. The weather was good except for the storm uh, which dumped several inches of snow. I temporarily joined a group uh, from Crabtree Meadows to the north side of Forrester Pass. This saved me time and energy as I was able to benefit from them breaking the trail through the new snow. Here is a table showing my daily mileages, uh, my start and finish times and it also shows uh, how I spent my rest time in Bishop. For this section my average daily mileage was 13.4 miles a day and if I look at only the full days, which I count as 6 hours or more, my average was 17.4 miles a day. On average I walked 7.5 hours a day and once again looking at only full days my average was walking 9 hours and 55 minutes each day. The second section was 114.8 miles on the PCT, the 7.6 miles from Onion Valley car park back to the trail and 5.6 miles uh, from the trail to get to the car park near Mammoth Lakes. It took me nine days and I was carrying 11 days of food. I did not weigh my pack but I estimate it was probably around 43 pounds. The snow was mixed with mainly nice hard pack sections and a few deeper and softer sections where I was slightly post holing. It was only in the late afternoon that this happened and the one day it got bad I set up tent early. This section had a lot of passes so there was a lot of climbing and dropping but it also had quite a bit of flat travel along the valleys. The only snow free areas were a couple of the valley floors. I saw two people just as I was going over Glen Pass and I camped next to them uh, by the bridge at the river in the same location but then I had seven and a half days without seeing a single person. The weather was bad for one day and then a few days later I had a, another half day of bad weather. Apart from that, blue skies. And another table showing what I did each day and also showing my two rest days in Mammoth. My average daily mileage was 12.8 miles a day and if only the full days the average went up to 14.1 miles a day. Average time I walked each day was 8 hours and 38 minutes and the average for just the full days was 9 hours and 40 minutes. So I was starting to do quite long days. The third section from Mammoth to Sonora Pass was 113.8 miles on the PCT and the 5.6 miles to get back on trail from Mammoth Lakes. It took me seven and a half days and I was carrying eight days of food. I was a bit slower than I thought I would be. This was the most difficult section as the thaw had started. This meant sun cups, post holing and very high rivers. There were no footprints to follow for most of the section and careful navigation slowed me down at times. The rivers were also causing delays as they had to try and find places to safely cross. And this table is showing the breakdown by day. My average daily mileage was 14.9 miles a day. And for only the full days, it was 15.7 miles a day. 
on average I walked nine hours and 50 minutes a day and for just the full days that was up to 10 hours and 27 minutes. That was some long days. Here's a graph showing what my normal mileages were when I wasn't walking through deep snow. Um, just so you can compare what my speeds are normally versus what they are in the Sierras and hopefully you can apply that to yourself. So that is a summary of how I went through the Sierras this year, 2019. Um, I think that the speeds and distances that I covered a fairly good worst case scenario um, to use for planning given that it was uh, high snow levels and there were quite a few storm delays. I hope this information is helpful but uh, before I end I do need to add the disclaimer that you need to develop your own resupply plans based on your and if applicable your group's experience, fitness and speed as well as the snow conditions and weather situation. I hope you all enjoy your time in the Sierras as much as I did.